Okay. Hello, good morning, and welcome to uh, this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week as we are doing today, and our archives are then posted on our website for you to watch at your convenience, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of those archived recordings. Both the live show and the archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the shows we have. Um, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. We are like the state library um, in many other states. So we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So on our show, you will find things for all types of libraries. Uh, public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, special museums, archives, it, it's all over the place. <laughs> Our only real criteria is something to do with libraries, something libraries are doing, something uh, we think they could be doing, services and products we think might be useful to them. Uh, we bring in guest speakers from across Nebraska and across the country uh, sometimes, and we sometimes have library commission staff that do presentations for us. And um, today's show, we have a combination of that. Uh, but before I get into today's show, I wanna do a quick reminder to everyone. I do this every week to make sure everybody knows what's available here. Uh, we are still in the height of the COVID-19 pandemic and it is getting worse um, all across, well, across the world. And here at the Library Commission, like many other state libraries and state library associations, we are providing resources for our libraries. We have a post here that is pinned to the top of our webpage. Always will appear there right at the top with resources that we have put together. Our library staff here, Library Commission staff gathering resources. We are attempting to keep a list, actually it is at the top there, of libraries in Nebraska. So this is just Nebraska libraries, who's open, who's closed, who's making special accommodations, curbside pickup, et cetera, um, who's reclosed, that's happening now. Um, <clears throat> so we have that information there we're trying to gather. If you're in Nebraska Library, let us know if you've had any changes. And then we have this subpage here with a lot of different information for libraries. Uh, things you can help, um, they can help your patrons, financial help, unemployment, what do I do with my kids? Um, but then the second section here is specifically for you as running your library. Uh, helpful resources that might be out there, um, just some guidance on what you could do, um, testing that's been done, advice, um, how to hold meetings here. Is this a specific meetings here in Nebraska? Uh, what our um, special accommodations have made for that. So we try and keep this up to date. There's always new updated. There's always new things being added to it as we hear about that new information coming out. As you know, this is a <clears throat> ongoing uh, situation and changes every day. So definitely keep an eye on that uh, for you. If you are not in Nebraska, many of these resources are good for anybody, but check your state library or your state library association. They may be doing the same thing and talking to you about in our state, this is what these statutes are and you know local requirements and things. So just wanted to remind everybody of that. What I'm going to do now is I am going to hand over presenter control to you, Tessa. You should see a pop-up telling you that you have been made a presenter and that you can share your screen. There we go, all right. All right. Then you can do it, um, whatever you do to make it like your full screen presentation. There you go, perfect. All right. Excellent, okay. Yeah. So um, on today's show, as I mentioned earlier, we have a combination of uh, presenters. Um, today we're gonna be talking about, well, I'm not, they're gonna be talking about letters about literature. And with us is Tessa Terry, who is the communications coordinator here at the Library Commission. And Christine Walsh, who's from our Kearney Public Library, but also uh, our Nebraska Center for the Book president, correct? Correct. That right? Yep. And uh, Sally Snyder, who is our children's and youth services coordinator here at the Library Commission. Um, so I'm just gonna hand it over to you guys to take it away and tell us all about this awesome program we got going here. Yeah, thanks, Krista. Um, so like Chris said, my name is Tessa Terry, and I work here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And um, 
We partner with the Nebraska Center for the Book, Humanities Nebraska, and some other um, organizations to put on Nebraska's version of Letters About Literature, which is a writing contest. So I'm gonna hand it off to uh, the Nebraska Center for the Book president, Christy Walsh, and let her tell you a little bit more about this uh, writing competition. Sounds good, thank you, Tessa. Um, Letters About Literature, used to be a national program. Um, it is um, over 25 years in existence. I believe Nebraska has participated for better than 18. So we have a strong um, heritage of Nebraskans participating in it, which is really exciting. Um, at this point, it is a statewide reading and writing program. It does not go on to a national competition any longer, but we're having fun reinventing it. It is for young readers in grades four through 12, and they're asked to write a letter or a poem to an author. Um, any author, doesn't have to be, uh, it can be living or dead, any genre. So if it's a book you love and you wanna write to that author, please do so. That is what your letters about literature entry is. And um, it's not a book report. We wanna know how that book um, how that author's work changed your view of the world or made an impact on you in some way. So it's a conversation with that author to say, hey, you made a difference and this is why. Um, there are three different levels of competition. So there are several, uh, there are options for lots of folks. Level one is grades four through six, level two, grades seven and eight, and level three, grade nine through 12. Um, you'll see the dates of submissions, and those will be accepted November 1st through December 31st. And Tessa will tell us more about how to get your entries in a little bit later in the program. What is the Nebraska Center for the Book? Excellent question. Um, the Nebraska Center for the Book brings together the state's readers, writers, booksellers, librarians, publishers, printers, um, scholars, educators to build a community of the book. And we are people who know and love books and who value the richness that they bring to our lives. And so it is a mixture of great literature and literacy and all things book, I guess, <laughs> um, to support that. So our mission is to continue getting the word out and have um, have um, competitions and events and things that promote reading and writing and literature for all ages. Letters About Literature is a program to connect young readers with authors and with books that they are passionate about. And in addition to that, they get to display their um, awesome writing skills too. So it gives you a chance to practice writing a great essay or letter um, to someone that has made an impact on your life. Nebraska uh, Letters About Literature is different from past national competitions because we only do it on the state level. Um, there are state letter about, letters about literature competitions across the country, but each one looks different. And most of them are in some way coordinated by the state affiliate center. So it might be the Texas State Center for the book or the Iowa State Center for the book, but each state gets to decide how their competition runs, what's it look like, how long, who judges, all of those different things. So we'll just talk about what Nebraska does. Um, I think I touched a little bit on how long it has been going on. I, th I believe we're over 18 years in the state of Nebraska, which is really exciting. That means that lots and lots of um, young people have shared their stories with authors on how they made a difference. Um, if you want to see some of those stories, I believe we have links up on our website. There are still a few links through the Library of Congress State Centers for the book available too, um, but on a more limited capacity than in the, few, in the past. 
There are prizes in each category for um, a winner and a runner up. So um, it's exciting to recognize all of those writers. And there are prizes that will be determined down the line. In the past, they have been sponsored by Houch and Bindery and Chapters Book um, Bookstore in Seward and a variety of other um, supporters and donors. So we will have more details on that as we get deeper into the competition. And as always, the winners and the runner-up letters will be displayed <clears throat> in the Heritage Room. So they receive that national recognition. Um, the celebration to recognize our winners, we don't really know what that's going to look like this year. As with so many things, um, flexibility and creativity are kind of the catch words. And we will have something that certainly um, acknowledges the accomplishments and celebrates the accomplishments of these young um, writers. But what that looks like is dependent on so many factors that we can't possibly pin that down at this moment. Um, okay. And libraries, certainly there are ways for libraries to be involved. You can partner with classroom teachers. You can promote the library as a place to find the book that makes a difference. Talk to your favorite librarian, see if they have a recommendation of something maybe you haven't read or a new author to explore. Um, they are always a fabulous resource. Um, the libraries can certainly share all of the materials and the links for the Center for the Book and the Letters About Literature materials <clears throat> on how to enter, um, all of those things. And it would be kind of fun, I was thinking maybe with our writers group at my library, to challenge adults to write their own letters as examples. Wouldn't it be fun to put it out there and write your letter to Rick Riordan or whoever it is that you are really excited about? And it, you could even send it to them if they're a living author. You never know what happens with those. Um, but I think it's good for the adults to model the possibilities that are out there. Libraries can also recruit writing mentors from local writing groups or college classes. Maybe there's somebody that would help those kids um, or enters um, the participants tune up their work a little bit. How do you spruce that up and really make it pop so it's one of those top entries? And then the option to host a letter writing clinic for students in your area. This year, much more challenging. So I think we're gonna have to look for online resources for that, but there are lots of things out there and once again, contact your local library or the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, there are options for all kinds of great resources online. So we're gonna take a minute to go through the submission process together. It's changed since last year. We're no longer using Submittable, the online um, submission site we used last year and the year before. So it's a little bit different, but I think it's a little easier as well. It's much uh, more streamlined. And since we're doing it all here in house, it's just a lot easier for us to control it as well, which we're kind of excited about. So the very first thing to know is that all letters are submitted on the Nebraska Center for the Book Letters About Literature webpage. And if I go to that webpage, does everybody see that okay? Yep. Um, so we've got um, a great web page here with resources for you. We've got past letters that you can take a look at. That's really helpful for students to know what we're looking for. Um, help them understand this isn't a book report and um, and just read what other students have written that they're their same age, their same grade, and what they've put out there. We have it nice and bold up here in the corner, a submit button. But there are also links all over the web page for our submission platform. And then all the way at the bottom as well, we have another big submit button. So we wanted to make it as easier for you to as easy as possible for you guys to find. And um, letters about literature isn't just for students in a classroom. Um, it's for any student. They could be homeschooled, they could be doing this on their own time as a creative writing project. So we wanted to make it as accessible as possible. So you just click on that link and it takes you right here to the submission platform. 
where we give another little overview of what we're looking for, as well as um, some specifics about how long the letter should be. And the first thing we want is a school name. So if you're homeschooled, you probably have a homeschool name. Even if you're doing this on your own time as a student and not for a class in particular, we wanna know what school you go to and a way to contact your school so that we can let them know you won. We need the student's first and last name. We also need the student's age. Since we are submitting these letters online, um, there are some rules about how old someone can submit something online and whether they need parental um, permission. So if students are under 13, um, as of November 1st, which has already passed, they need a parent's permission to submit their letter. And we've made that very easy. We have an online signature and consent form that the parent or guardian needs to fill out. And it's just like when you do your taxes online, it's an online signature that you are saying you are fine with your child submitting this letter to us. So that's very important. We need you to pick what your submission level is. Just pick the one that is your grade. We wanna know um, specifically what grade you're in. And then we would like some sort of adult information. So if you are a teacher helping your class do this, we want your information. If you are a librarian holding a letter writing clinic, we want your information. If you're a parent or a guardian, we want your information. So an adult we can contact if you are the winner and let you know. And this is also the email that your um, submission will, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of the word, Con confirmation. You will get an email confirmation to this email that you submit that your letter was received so that you know everything went great. We want to know the author you're writing to, their name, and the title of the book you're writing about so that we have all that information up front. And then last but not least, we want your actual letter. So you have two options. You can fill out this text box and just go ahead and type it in, copy and paste your letter. Or you can click here and you can upload a PDF of your letter. So either one of those options are perfectly fine. We would prefer letters are in PDF format. It means that they can't be um, edited by us by accident. We can't go in and accidentally delete anything or um, they can't be, uh, uh, wow, I cannot think of words today. We can't today. change them up. <laughs> we can't mess them up. So. Yeah, I do have a question about that. That I know sometimes in forms like this, there's limit character limits on the fields. Is that field like I don't know, unlimited is allowed, but <laughs> how much time, how much space do they have if they do just type right into there? So you, you know? do have a limit of 800 words for this letter, so that is your space limit in this text box. Okay, so so it's matched up with what the limits are for the contest itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. Perfect. Yeah, so, and that's something we'll be keeping an eye on. Um, we want letters to be a little bit consistent, so it's easier for our judges. So we don't want um, a letter that's just a couple of sentences, but we also, our judges don't have time to read a five page letter to your author, as, much, as enjoyable as that might be. Um, so we kind of have that limit on there, so they're consistent and it's easier for our judges to compare them. And then, like I said, if we click here, you go to a Dropbox link where you can add your file right here. And after you hit the submit button, if you have filled in every box with an asterisk, which is required, you will get an email confirmation that says we've received your letter. It will have some of the information you typed in so you know it's your letter we received. And it will also have my contact information so that if you upload your letter and then you realize um, you uploaded the wrong copy, you uploaded your first draft instead of your last draft, and you're panicking, you can contact me and we can figure out a way to help you because we know mistakes happen and I've definitely uploaded the wrong document before myself. So we're not, <laughs> we're not heartless. <laughs> we want 
we want to see your best work. We want your best work to be judged. So if something happens that um, you make a mistake, let us know and we will work with you to fix that. So that's important to us too. Okay, let me see if I can get back to our PowerPoint. All right, I think we said we got all this. Um, one thing to just we want you to know, once you submit your letter to us, it is the property of the Nebraska Library Commission. And that just means we will um, post them on our website so that other people can read them. Um, and that you can't sue us for copyright infringement at some point later on. So we wanna make sure you are aware of that. We also wanna let you know that we will not send you a copy back of your letter. Um, so please keep a personal copy so you have that on record for um, any other type of work you wanna keep. And, and we're always willing to uh, look up your letters. We've had to do that in the past for sure for students that um, maybe lost their copy, but it's always good to have your own personal copy. And then we do know some students write extremely personal information in their letters. I mean, it's about how your life has been changed and that can be um, very personal. So if you are um, really adamant that you wanna to write to us, but you are very concerned about your personal information getting out, um, maybe send us an email and let us know that if you win, that's maybe something you'd like to be consulted about and we're, we're open to work with you. Let's see. Okay, how do we judge the letters? This is um, really good to talk about because it's good to know what our parameters are and what you should really be writing about. And that's why we have Sally with us today. Sally is a judge for our level one letters and she's been doing that for many, many years. Sally, do you know how, many, how long you've been judging letters? I was trying to think what, it, it's got to, since you said 18, I didn't get in right away, so it might be 15 years. <laughs> Long yeah. enough to be a pretty good expert, yes. I think. Um, and it's one of the things I really enjoy because you get to see the heart of the kids that are writing. You get to see, and we don't know who the kids are, just so you know. Um, they're, they all have, um, I can't remember, well, I know what we're going to do this year, but there's some kind of code so I know letter something or other that's the one I want to vote for but I don't know if it's a, a boy or a girl unless they say something in the letter about themselves and I don't know how old they are except for the grade range um, so it's all very anonymous and I think that's also important for people to realize hmm. and should I just keep on talking or did you have something else yeah. <laughs> no, um, tell us about what you look for in a letter. What we're looking for is what Christine said earlier is, um, how did this book make an impact on you and your life? It, it changed your worldview, I think was one of the things we said earlier. And so we're looking for them to say what it was about this book that really made them stop and think about their own life and where they are and um, maybe have a different perspective about what things had been happening to them that might have been similar to the character in the book. Some of the things that people talk about have to are the kids I, I whose letters I read, they'll talk about bullying or they'll talk about losing a, a loved family member. These kinds of things are things that really come from the heart. And they talk to the author and when this happened to your character in the book, it I really stopped and you know, thought about my own family in this way. So you're looking for that connection that the, the book has made with the reader and also how that has impacted them. Um, so that's first and foremost what we're looking at. Along with that are, are also some things that are maybe more boring but important like grammar and sentence construction and um, now I'm like I we said I'm I'm with the younger group the the eight, grades four to six, the youngest group. So we're not looking for sophisticated college level um, letters, but we're we're looking for um, how they how they get their feelings and information across, and and the impact that the book made. So 
Um, Sally, what kind of, what are some memorable books you've had students write about? Oh my goodness, that's such a good question. I've, there, there's been more than one kid who's written about a Stephen King book, which, you know, <laughs> I get terrified. I'm just a chicken in scary stories, so not my cup of tea, but I'm familiar with the, the books and their, their general um, themes, so to speak. So yeah, many kids are a lot braver than than me. <laughs> like, I'll read that book. Oh, okay, fine. Go ahead and read it. Just don't tell me about it. No. <laughs> and, and also, they they've chosen such interesting ones because sometimes it'll be something that was published a while back, and I think how how did you run across this book? That would be fun to know too. Um, so Stephen King is an author. Also, um. The, the Hunger Games has been in, and this is again, this is ages or grades four to six. And I always thought of the Hunger Games as older, but you know, kids hear about things and they, they grab them and read them. And those books are very compelling. I can't remember the connection. The, I was just thinking, <laughs> the Hunger Games are so horrifying as an adult going, what are the kids, you know, they're, yikes, but, um, it's her perseverance and her her trying to do the right thing when she can that that they react to. Would you say there's there's a right book and a wrong book to write about? Like how how would you address a question like that? Ooh, that's that's another good question. I would say any book might end up being the right book for that child or student to write about if there's that connection that's happened in there something that happened in the book that really made them stop and think about their own life and and what's going on and and the wrong the wrong book not really it's just that that link didn't happen or as far as i can tell from reading the letter i have received a few letters that are more like a book report so to speak where oh this happened in the book and that was fun and this happened and that was exciting and i thought it was a really good book thank you and that's nice but that's not the heart that we were looking are looking for with the contest. So um, I wouldn't say there is a wrong book and the right book has to be the one that you connect with. Yeah, I think one of the things um, to just highlight is that the book is, the book is important, but it we wanna know what you think. We wanna know your thoughts and how it affected you, not, um yeah the plot of the novel so yeah i like that that it's any book can be the right book if it made an impact definitely um so we always have two judges for each level so it's not just sally reading the letters there are two people for each level so there's um back and forth how does that process work for you sally well for for the librarian that I've been working with the past several years, we both read separately, read the letters, make our comments. You know, I write little notes about each one and set them in this pile or I print them off. Yes, I'm sorry, I waste paper. But then I can set them in this pile if it's not so much, well, I'm trying with electronic, I'm trying just to print the ones I think are at the top of the list, so to speak. So I print them and mark things in there and, and then we call each other on the phone. And that's where we really talk about, well, here's my top three. What are your top three? And interestingly, we are often very similar mm -hmm. in, the, we've, uh, in the ones we've chosen. So we feel good about that. And we discuss, why did you make this number one when I had it number three? Um, oh yes, those are good points. But my number one is this, and I have these points about that. And so, we have a real discussion about it. And sometimes we have to go think about it some more and call back again later. But um, sometimes we get it all uh, agreed to in one phone call that might last a while, but it's a good way to, we should start using, um, I don't know if she wants to see my face when I'm talking about my books, so <laughs> the books I hear, the, the um, writers who I think are at the top. Have you guys ever um, had a disagreement about who should get first or runner up, or is it almost always um, you're able to come to a decision? So far, we have all, all always had the winner and the, the runner up that we name 
are both in our top three or four. So, so we're, we've been very close. Now I, I realize there's gonna be a day when that might not be the case and I'm not sure how we'll handle that, but we'll figure it out because that's what we're supposed to do. Um, yeah, I think um, we've never had that happen before where we've had judges not be able to come to a um, consensus on who they think should win. So that's kind of heartening that there's always someone very clear they they feel deserves first and runner up. I think um, if we ever did have that happen, we would probably have a judge from a different level, you know, yeah. pass on. We'd have a tiebreaker. Yeah, we'd have a tiebreaker. And I have to try then, really hard not to, not to pick the person who wrote about my favorite book in the world just because it's my favorite book in the world. <laughs> and I don't have just one. I have like 400 favorite books in the world. So I was going to say. Oh, I'm so glad they picked that book. But they have to, you know, do the things that we've talked about. And, and so that's, you have to keep those things in your mind as you're reading. Yeah. And I think book selection is definitely something that teachers and librarians and parents can help with and help you know talk about a book with the student and and really ask those questions to try to weed out if it's a book report or if it's actually something that has affected them kind of a thing um, and then as far as our judges, how they're selected, um, they're selected by the Nebraska Center for the Book and they all volunteer their time. We've got a wide range of people who do it. We've got college professor, we've got Sally who works for the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, we have uh, Richard Miller who is retired from the Nebraska Library Commission that he's been a judge for many years. So um, like Sally said, her co-judge is a librarian, a children's librarian. So we have a really um, great pool of judges that read these letters and and really know what they're looking for. So you can you can know that the people judging these letters aren't just chosen willy nilly. They're they're very um, accomplished. <laughs> okay, this is a part of our um, guidelines that we make every year for what we're looking for, and I think it just really reflects what we're looking for. So we want you to read the book. That is important. Um, we want you to really think about it and reflect on what you've read and then write a persuasive personal letter. So this is a great thing to um, print out or send to students or prospective um, kids that you think would be great for this project and let them know and we'll go over where that's located, where you can find resources. So if we go back to that first page, oh, it's gonna open up a whole new one. In our Nebraska Center for the Book, um, under programs and letters about literature, we have a whole web page made for you to help you get your letters written and your students um, meeting all our qualifications. So we have a teaching guide that was made in the past but it is very informative and it is there for you to help your um, students your kids at your library homeschool really get the best um, letter out of them so i would definitely uh, take a peek at that we've got this webinar um, we've also got past webinars from years past that might be a little bit different um, as far as the submission process, but what we tell you every year is very similar as far as what we're looking for for letters. We've got past winners, um, and NET's All About Books did a program several years ago in 2016 about two of our winners, and their letters are recorded on there for you, and those are really fun to listen to. We've also got a complete list of all our winners in the past, as well as links to their letters. So there's a great resource to just see what people have written about in the past. And then a reflective writing assessment that you could go through with students that would really help them. And then just entering again. So up at the top, we also have our 2020 guidelines that opens a PDF for you. Um, we've been looking at pieces of it this whole time. 
see if it opens. Should look very familiar. All that great information. We've got a link to our webpage down here so you can um, find our submissions. And then we've got just our information that we've kind of gone over today about who to contact for questions, what we're looking for, um, information about students under the age of 13, as well as what we're looking for from judges. And once again, our website. So we really can't say that enough. Um, we do have information for letter writing clinics. I don't know what that will look like this year for you, if that's even a possibility. Um, but we still have the information from when we had letter writing grants, so we didn't want to get rid of that. And it's just a little helpful information sheet. We also have a resources page that goes over many of those same resources. So just to make it all there for you um, and easy to reach. Let me get back. I think it's good that we still have a lot of those resources about writing letters out there, even if potentially can't do something like in person with the, the children when they're, you know, about how to do a letter. Um, I know that's something that some people, who writes letters still? And how do you write a letter? Is that still taught in school? I don't know. <laughs> um, I definitely think it's something that's, being lost. I mean, we're so short and concise emails, text messages mm -hmm. are the way we normally communicate with people. Um, a tweet, a Facebook post, but sitting down and really writing a thoughtful letter mm -hmm. is not something I do on a regular basis, that's for sure. Yeah, and thinking about it, what we had, I know we've had issues or that we about this is that it's not a book report of what I liked about it. It's how did this personally affect me? That takes mm -hmm. a lot more writing, and and I think thinking of it more as is journaling something or like writing in a diary about my feelings and stuff is something that it's more akin to than uh, I like this book because yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, a lot more introspection. If you think of it as a conversation with the author, what is it you want to share with that author because you think it's a terrific book? Um, they already know what's in the book, so you don't need to explain that to them, but tell them why it made a difference to you. What is your story that came out of reading their story? Which parts of the book were the things that really gra grasped, you know, caught your attention and made you right. have those strong feelings or reactions? Yeah, I agree with that. And, um, you know, authors, they put this work out there and I cannot even imagine the amount of time and effort and blood, sweat and tears that it goes into them making these works. And for them to know that somebody had an immense reaction to it, I think would be very important. They yeah. wanna hear it, yeah, they wanna know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, we also have social media. We have a Facebook page for the Nebraska Center for the Book where we post updates and we would love to hear from you guys as well. If you have um, questions or books you want to just talk about, we love talking about books in general. Um, that's a great place to connect with us as well as email, but we'd really love to get a conversation started about letters about literature and what you guys like to do when you're recommending books to children and helping them reflect on the writing they've read yeah if there's anybody i haven't we haven't had any comments or questions come in throughout the show yet today um but if anybody any of you who are on today have any tips or tricks or ideas about what you've done if you've done a letters about literature before <clears throat> with the um kids in your library or if you have any uh thoughts or ideas about how it could be done. Like you said, you know, doing reader's advisory for the kids and what they might like to read. I liked what you said earlier, Krista, about um, comparing it to kids who are journaling or writing in a diary because yeah. that's more of uh, their personal emotions and personal, personal reactions to their world. And then they can pull that to the book. 
And I, I know that kids do write in journals and, and diaries because authors are still writing books about kids writing in journals and diaries. So, um, but I, I personally don't know any kids who are. So it makes me curious. Yeah. Sounds great. So we have several organizations that help to make letters about literature possible. And under the Center for the Book, we've got um, the Nebraska Library Commission. We play a big part, and we just partner with the Center for the Book to make this possible. We've got um, Humanities Nebraska, which has donated funds before for grant opportunities. And then we've also got Pouch and Bindery and Chapters Bookstore that have participated in the past, helping donate prize money, as well as um, just funding for us as well. Christy, do you have anything to say about that? I know you touched on sponsors just a little bit earlier. Just that we so appreciate all the sponsors and all the organizations that continue to make this an exciting project to work on. I mean, it, it is a team effort and we couldn't do it if we didn't all work together, I guess. So, um, and the continued support always of sponsors who make it possible to recognize these young writers and um, their accomplishments and help us celebrate in a normal year, we have a celebration. There's a proclamation from the governor and we get to celebrate and those students are recognized with a ceremony at the Capitol. Um, mm -hmm. This year, that is a great big question mark, but we will figure out a great way to celebrate and acknowledge um, all of our winners again. Yeah, we've already been kind of um, talking about what our other options might be. So we will know about that eventually um the contest your submissions come in by the end of december and then we send them off to the judges at the first of the year so they have time to read all of these letters and really um, consider them and then our normal ceremony doesn't happen until april national library week is when we try to celebrate the winners and honor these students but that might look a little different this year. So we have a little bit of time to really figure out what our next steps are as far as in-person celebrating versus maybe doing something a little more virtual. And then we also have um, my contact information. Email is a great way to get a hold of me. Um, we've got the Center for the Book email on the um website as well as the guidelines page that goes to me as well i see the center for the book emails and uh, my phone number so great ways to get in contact with me and i think that's my last slide krista so. do we have any questions yet uh no it doesn't look like it um if anybody does have any questions or comments or anything you want to ask of tessa christy or sally about the letters about literature um, or anything you want to share, as I said, about what if you've held one of these or um, ideas you have, go ahead and type into the questions section. Um, we have still have plenty of time here in our hour this morning. Um, let me double check that window open here. Yeah, there we go. And like I said, if you do have your own microphone, you can um, um, you can ask your question or make your comment that way as well. I can unmute you. You just need to let me know. Hopefully this has been a time where people have been able to read some extra books maybe they didn't have time for. So some time for reflection and get those get those letters in the works. Uh, we do have a question and I think you might have sort of mentioned this, but uh, maybe a little uh, more detail. Is, it, is the program funded by the Library Commission or other sponsors? Like where does the, um, any, I know you mentioned about prizes and things, but where does the actual, funding come from? How is that? <laughs> Sorry, can you hear that? Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I've got a dog that wants attention. Yes. Um, so all the prize um, money funding is comes from these sponsors. It's donated by um, Chapters Bookstore, Hooch and Bindery, um, or it has come from Humanities Nebraska before in the past, I know. So 
as far as um, well, what are the actual costs are for it are really the are are the the prizes. There's not any other. I mean, doing the website and doing this, this is just something we do at the commission is one of the things we do. So there's not special funding on on our budget that would need to do anything for this that would be needed. No. Yeah, in the yeah, past, when we the had prizes, some minimal, yeah. that was something that was funded by the Center for the Book. Um, the commission's partnership with it really is our time and helping host um, the website. We do the uh, updates and things like that. And um, coordination, that is also something we help with. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's more our time and effort than our direct funding. Yeah. And the judges are volunteers, so they generously give up their time. And there are various, um, you know, uh, Center for the Book board members who behind the scenes help with things too. So once again, it's a volunteer support. It's just yeah, one of it's just we do here at the commission. Yeah, we have lots of different programs that we're involved in with the Center for the Book, with the Rest Humanities, with other mm -hmm. uh, library or uh, organizations. Yeah. Yeah, I know we just see this as another way to be able to um, talk to people about what they're reading and how you know important literature and literacy is to everyone from students as young as fourth grade up to, you know, however old we are reading these letters. And just, <laughs> I know we're always kind of blown away by the letters we receive. I think Sally can talk about that a little more as a judge, but, you know, just because they're from fourth graders doesn't mean they don't, you know, we don't read these letters and are impacted by them as well. Some of them are very touching and you, and the, the things that have happened to a child and and that child's family so far in their lives is is a, stunning and you know either wonderful or oh i'm so sorry but how they are responding to it is amazing they are so resistant and surviving and moving mm -hmm. ahead and and noticing things around them that the authors have done and that has really helped them get through something and that's so touching so yeah, there's been a tear or two mm -hmm. reading some of these, but then there's and, also been some very funny ones. And that's, you know, another joy is that they they caught something very humorous and, and brought it along with them into their lives. And, and kids are great, but of course I think that <laughs> has such a way of looking at things and, and uh, reminding us that, you know, here's where we are. And, Here's where we need to go. I think sometimes we too often dismiss children as what they can, what they think and what they're thinking and how things are affecting them. They're very resilient, like you said, but they're so insightful. And I, very often I've read things from kids and said, wow, I would not have thought of that. Or are you, sh you know, every, and you've, you've done this, said this before, Sally, and when you do your um, sessions, your book lists that, um, all children are at different age, different levels, really. There's not really a hard, you're only this age, so you only know this, and you can only read this book, and you can only respond to it this way. It, it varies across the board, and you could have someone younger who's just had so much experience and just has been able to, you know, read into this book so much more, and just, that's why I like the fact that you said, I think so you don't know the gender and who these kids are. It's just a, here's a letter from someone, from a child, read it and see what you think yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i think um the the skill of being able to recommend a book for a kid to read is something you should really be talking to your librarians about um mm -hmm. because they have such a skill for you know having a conversation with a kid about something they've read and being able to recommend something else that might take it a step further or be another great um, compliment to something they already are interested in and just expand their reading. And yeah, so it's a really great partnership between teachers and students and their librarians. 
And opportunities for the parents to collaborate with them, you know, what a great way to encourage your student to write. And maybe that leads to something additional. Then you want to write to grandpa and grandma to say, hey, I read this book and it touched me this way. Do you remember when or something yeah. along those lines? So there are possibilities, I think, for it to be a springboard for other writing opportunities or connections. And this seems to be a great year to look at those family connections and keep in touch. Mm -hmm. And in years past, sometimes it's been a, a teacher's assignment to the kids to yes. write a letter for this contest. And um, the teacher has guided them along probably with their librarian as to the writing and, the, and what they should include. And it's been interesting that's I don't know if there's anybody still doing that because I can't tell but a, a number of years ago Lorene Redesell must have told me that or something because you can't tell when you get the letters you really don't know where they came from except Nebraska <laughs> yeah I know I've already had a teacher contact me asking me when this contest was getting started because they um love having their students do it as an assignment and really yeah, think about it's a different it's type of writing. That it's an annual thing that they and the kids always look forward to. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's a different type of writing than maybe what kids are used to in class, um, as far as you know, a book report versus reflective writing, which is something they look at for in you know as you get older in English classes and if you go on to college classes, they don't want a book report from your your paper. They want to know what you think. So. It's a really great springboard for for that as well. Good point. Yeah. Well, we don't have any questions. Anything um, else you guys want to say? Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any other questions. Um, we do have a couple more couple more minutes. If anyone does anything desperate you want to ask of Tessa, Christy, or Sally right now, get it typed in there. Um, Otherwise, you do have their contact info. Um, you guys know where to find us. And of course, all the links on the Letters About Literature website. You can always reach out with questions. And if you're thinking about getting the, the children in your library or school involved in uh, doing Letters About Literature. I'm excited we can continue this process, even with the, the change with the Library of Congress um, and how it is being done now. Um, it's exciting to continue it, and I think it's given everybody time to reinvent, and maybe it makes it a little more personal because on the state level, we um, are responding to our, you know, to Nebraskans. And so that's a different experience than living in a different state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know, um, I don't know if you mentioned this earlier, I might have missed it. Are How many other states are continuing it still? Do you know at all? I don't have a number off the top of my head. Most yeah. of them, mm -hmm. I would say that at least 35 are continuing oh. in some manner. There are some that are taking a year or two off to decide, do they want to continue? Do they want to do something completely different. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of an ongoing conversation. Yeah, I do remember when the Library of Congress had announced they weren't going to be supporting it as previously had been done, that there was many, many states that were like, no, <laughs> this is a huge thing we do. So well, I know it, there was... it happened pretty abruptly. So it, it, um, Surprised. Yeah. it was kind of a surprise and shifting gears it's yeah, always a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's definitely taken us a couple of years of some trial and error to figure out what works best for us as an individual state or you know, outside of the national competition. So mm -hmm. so that's been a good learning process. And I'm sure we don't have it perfected yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> Practice so we, tested out, uh, yeah. And we're able and to connect with some of those other state centers um, who were running theirs fairly independently anyway, and they've been uh, extremely useful resources to ask questions and say, what are your best practices? How did you decide to manage it yourself? And so, um, 
you know, that collaboration is also very valuable. That's good. You had People some of that generous. experience to, to um, work from. Nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we have a little comment. Thank you so much. Uh, one of our attendees says, very informative, great program. We think so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it doesn't look like there's any questions or anything. So I think we will um, wrap up a bit here today. Um, so definitely go to the website. Uh, the submissions just opened uh, this week and, and you've got until you got the next two months till the end of the year to get um, the letters in and submitted. So um, you got plenty of time to get on top of this and I hope we will get some really great letters. All right, I am going to pull back presenter control to my screen now and switch to go. There you go. Awesome. All right. So um, thank you, everybody, for attending this morning. Thank you, uh, Tessa and Christy and Sally, for being here with us to talk about the Letters About Literature. Happy uh, to do it. Uh, as I said, the show's been recorded. We do have a link here to the Letters About Literature um, webpage, too. So you'll have a quick link from there when we do have the archives up. Gonna go back to our Encompass Live main page here, and I said I'll show you. Um, the show's been recorded. Uh, a recording should be available and ready for you as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me uh, by the end of this week at the latest. And uh, I'll go here under our archive shows. We have our upcoming shows here, and then right underneath there's a link to our archives, and it'll be the top one here, most recent ones at the top. We'll have a link to the recording on our YouTube channel and a link to uh, the slides that they used. Everyone who attended this morning and anyone who registered will get an email from me letting you know when the archive is available. We also push it out to all our social media. We do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. So if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. We do reminders about when uh, we're ready to start today's show, uh, about upcoming shows, when recordings are available. So um, we do push it on there. And also to our other social media, um, Twitter, Instagram, et cetera. We have a hashtag for the show, Encump Live, a little abbreviation there. So look for that online if you wanted to know what we're doing about with Encompass Live. Uh, while we're here in the archives, I'll show you there is a search feature here. You can search through our full archives and see if there's any other topics you might want to watch any shows from. You can do the whole archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want to. That is because, and I'm going to scroll down a bit here, but not all the way. This is the full archives of Encompass Live from the beginning of the show. Uh, we premiered Encompass Live in January of 2009. 2009, yes. So we have over 10 years worth of recordings here. So 50 some shows a year, that's a lot. <laughs> so we do have the search features. You can search by topic or limit it to just most recent year if you just want recent information. But if you search the whole archive, just pay attention to the original broadcast dates um, for when this information was prevent, presented. Certain things may be um, still valid, book reading lists, reviews of things like that, of course, but sometimes things about, you know, how to use Google Forms or what are the processes for library accreditation from three, four or five years ago, they're gonna, things have changed. So just pay attention to what you're watching of when the original broadcast date was so you know if it's something maybe older then you just need to take that in consideration as you're watching the recordings. So that is for today's show. Um, we have our full our schedule here of our next few our upcoming uh, shows in November and December. Um, I hope you join us next week when our topic is open educational resources, creating an open educational resource. Grenzen Los Duch. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I'll find out next week. A <laughs> German language online curriculum. This is a project done through McAllister College in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, and um, staff from there will be coming on talking about that. And important, you can see here in red, I have this. This will be on a Tuesday instead of Wednesday next week, special day, because Wednesday is the Veterans Day holiday. And as a state agency here in Nebraska, we are closed on Wednesday. So we bumped it to Tuesday. So just pay attention to the fact that this will be Tuesday in Compass Live on a special day. Um, and then we go back to our regular Wednesdays after that. And I don't think. Yeah, I don't have any other weird Wednesday holidays coming up. So thank you everybody for attending this morning and hopefully we'll see you on another episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>